Hello, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. I'm filming in our New York office here this week and we uh, have seen another week with new highs in the market. So um, we get ready to go into earnings season here on Friday of this week with some of the financial companies reporting. And then on into next week, you get quite a slew of, of Big Cap Americana reporting their Q2 earnings results. And then the week after that, week after that, it just becomes very, very heavy. So there are a lot of questions around earnings season. The expectations are quite high and, and for probably pretty good reason. We've been enjoying quite an acceleration in corporate profits. Um, I think there's some question as to maybe what forward guidance will look like in terms of how they're projecting the rest of the year going. There's always questions about top line revenue growth. But earnings have not really been a big question in the market. They've frankly been the big driver of the markets. Um, the, the theme I kind of want to discuss here this week a little is this, this the, the difference right now in volatility politically and in the market. Um, I think it is rather extraordinary how much political volatility we've certainly been dealing with um, really since well before the election. It was quite a, a culturally and politically volatile campaign as well as most would agree. And coming into the post-election but pre-inauguration period, there was an awful lot of question marks around the lay of the land, um, a lot of optimism about what some of that uh, market-friendly agenda may be. And then, of course, since the time of the inauguration, there's obviously been a significant amount of volatility around um, press coverage, around disappointments in the agenda legislatively, and, and cabinet controversies and things of that nature. Um, but apparently the market doesn't know about it or the market doesn't care about it or both. Um, I have a chart at DividendCafe.com this week pointing out that so far, and again, the year's a little over halfway done, there's still plenty of time left, but if you look at the average daily move in the market, up or down from the day prior, um, it is at about 32 basis points, 0.32% per day, on track for the lowest daily volatility since 1965. Okay, so a um, 52-year period um, that has gone by since we've seen this low of day-to-day -day volatility in the market. Yet those gyrations that we don't see in the market are certainly very different than the gyrations we do see in the politico sphere. And I would suggest the reason for that is largely that the markets have wisely learned to tune out much of the noise, a lot of it media driven, a lot of it um, having no impact to the discounting of earnings and the health of corporate America, which is what stock prices are at the end of the day always and forever about. Um, I do believe that the, corny, the corporate earnings uh, reacceleration story and largely um, healthy economic data in the global front and domestic front has enabled markets to tune out a lot of the domestic political noise and even a lot of the central bank noise. We have a lot of time dedicated in our DividendCafe.com, the written this week, to the central banks. And as a matter of fact, there's an article I wrote at MarketEpicurean.com that's a little higher level about the same thing, the kind of lay of the land in the Fed. Chairwoman Janet Yellen spent two days giving her semi-annual testimony to the Senate Finance Committee this week, and, and the market's barely moved. As a matter of fact, as I'm recording here on Thursday, a couple hours into Chairwoman Yellen's testimony, markets are up 18 points. Yesterday, they moved higher, and this is all in the context where we're talking about healthy economic data, the need to tighten monetary policy. Um, but again, if you had asked a pundit six months, 12 months ago, uh, what, what will, how will markets respond to the Fed talking about three or four rate increases in a year, which is certainly what we're on track for. Wasn't, we've already had three in the last eight months, and we're looking at at least one more, if not two, not to mention them uh, decreasing the size of their balance sheet. So I believe that the markets are confounding a lot of prior expectations and consensus, and they're doing so with the wind at their back of a, of a reasonably benign global economic backdrop and an extremely benign corporate earnings backdrop. 
So we will see as earnings season launches if that story gets even better, if perhaps it, it disappoints to some degree. I suspect you will see disappointments on an individual basis. Uh, we've argued all year and largely been right that this is a stock picker's market at this point, that um, people have an opportunity to be more selective in what they buy and we think ad return that way. So that's the lay of the land. Uh, a lot of talking on the Fed. They've gotten themselves back in the headlines this week. Uh, significant expectation that President Trump will not reappoint Janet Yellen when her term expires in a few months. Several names being thrown around. I'll talk about that in the future. I have some strong opinions on that subject. But um, we go into earnings season now with, uh, with this expectation um, that overall markets are, are healthy and economic fundamentals are healthy and that the political volatility has become completely bifurcated from market volatility. Other things can bring back market volatility at any time, but um, this is what we believe is the new normal, is the markets uh, being exhausted by the continued political circuses. Thanks for listening to Dividend Cafe. I do uh, hope you'll read DividendCafe.com and uh, check out all the charts and everything we put there. And I certainly hope you'll, you'll reach out to us if you have any questions whatsoever. There's a lot going on right now. Thanks so much.